The pivot functions are relatively new functions that combine the four basic tidy verbs. You can also convert data between long and wide formats using these functions. Many researchers still use these functions, and older code will not use the pivot functions, so it's useful to know how to interpret these. The first one is gather. Now, gather is much like pivot longer. It makes wide data tables long by creating a column for the headers and a column for the values. The main difference is that you can't turn the headers into more than one column. Okay, so let's use the personality data set from the data skills package again, if you don't have it loaded. Data personality. Okay. Now, we use the gather function. So let's make a new object called personality gathered and use the gather function with it. Okay, so the same as with pivot longer. We start with the data that we want to gather here, and that's personality. And here, instead of names two, this is called key in the gather function. It's basically the same as the names two function from pivot longer, except we can only give it one value. So let's give it the value of question. And we need to say, what's the name of the, val the new value column? The same as in pivot longer, we can call this score. Now in the gather function, the columns that we would put first here, we put at the end. And we can specify them in the same way, op1 through ex9. Okay. So personality gathered then gives us a long version but our question has now two pieces of information in it, what domain and what question number, violating the tidy principles. We can use another verb called separate to fix that. Okay, so we can make a new object called personality separated and use the separate function. And like always, tell it what data set we're working with. Here, we're working actually with personality gathered. But we want to separate one of the columns, so the question column, into two new columns. So the first argument here we set is which column do we want to separate? The one called question. And we don't need to put it in quotes because it's already a column in our data. And then we want to say, what do we want to separate it into? These are new columns, so they have to be in quotes. We need to separate it into domain and Q number. Okay. And we need to say, what do we need to separate it on? So that's the same really as the names set argument for pivot longer. So we want to separate it at the second character. Remember question is in the format OP1 or NE7. So the division between them is um, an integer counting how many characters you want to separate it at rather than a character that's used to do the separation. Okay, so we can run this function, personality separated. Um, and let's use glimpse to have a quick look at this. Okay, so now we have five columns, user ID, date, domain, and Q number. But we can see here that Q number, even though these are all integer numbers, is set as a character type of column. That's because when they were combined, OP1 was a character column. So all the resulting columns will be character columns, but you can 
put a separate argument in separate called convert and that will check the column types or the the value types for each new column and convert them into numbers or logical values if that seems relevant. So if we run this glimpse, now this has been converted into an integer. Just like pivot wider is the opposite of pivot longer, gather and separate also have opposite functions. So the opposite of separate is unite. We can unite back those two columns, um, domain and queue number, back into a new column name. So let's set personality unite. We're using the unite function. It will take the data from personality Gap, um, separated. You need to tell the unite function what the new column name is going to be. And let's set this new column name to domain n. Then the next arguments are what columns you want to unite. So we just type them in here domain comma Q number and we also need to tell this function how do we want to separate the values from domain and Q number so let's separate them with underscore Q and see what that looks like oops now we get an error it says can't subset columns that don't exist column Q number doesn't exist so let's look at personality separated. Ah, Q number doesn't have an underscore. So let's delete that underscore, run this again, and have a look at personality unite. Now it's taken these two columns, domain and Q number, and pasted them together with this separator. So the domain OP then underscore Q1. It's also gotten rid of the domain and Q number columns. If you want to keep those columns, let's look at the help for unite. And there's another argument called remove. If true, input columns are removed from the output data frame. And we can see here in unite, by default, remove is true. If we set remove to false, then this will unite those two columns, domain and Q number, into domain N, but will leave the original columns in your data frame as well. Let's get rid of them though. Okay. And so our last function to reverse this process is called spread. This takes a data table from long to wide. So let's create a new object called personality spread. It will take a data frame. Let's spread personality unite. Now personality spread, we need to tell it the key. So remember when we gathered these data, when we went from wide to long, we created a new key column called question and a value column called score. Now we've gotten rid of question, our new key column, that is the column that um, we want to turn into the new headers is domain n. And we need to tell spread where do we get the values of these new columns from, and the values will come from the score column. So here we have our data table. 
we can view this in the viewer. And you can see that the columns are now those new values, ag underscore q1, ag underscore q2, and so on. It's reordered these into alphabetic order. In the next video, you'll see how to chain together all of these operations using a pipe so we don't have to create all of these intermediate objects.